Welcome to the WMNF Afternoon Call-In Show, The Last Call. I'm Sean Canan. In a moment, we'll open up the phone lines to take your calls. The number is 813-239-9663. You can also email your questions or comments to dj at wmnf.org. Uh, before we get started today, I want to read a couple of news stories that have broken since we aired the WMNF Drive Time News today. Uh, this is a note from Dennis Kucinich, former, well, current representative from, in, from Ohio, Dennis Kucinich. He says, after careful consideration and discussions with Elizabeth and my closest friends, I've decided that at this time I can best serve from outside the Congress. He goes on to say, my commitments to peace, to workers' rights, and to social and economic justice are constant, and they're not dependent upon holding an office. So uh, Dennis Kucinich has decided that he will not try to run for Congress in the state of Washington, as was rumored um, that he might be thinking about it. But he says he's going to best serve from outside Congress. That's from Dennis Kucinich. Here are a couple of other stories that uh, we've been following since the end of the newscast. Army leaders say a combat brigade will be assigned to the Pentagon's Africa Command next year in a pilot program that will send small teams of soldiers to countries around the continent to do training and participate in military exercises. General Ray Ordierno, the Army's Chief of Staff, says the plan is part of a new effort to provide U.S. commanders around the globe with troops on a re rotational basis to meet the military needs of their regions. This pilot program sends troops to an area that has become a greater priority for the Obama administration since it includes several nations where terrorist <coughs> groups are an increasing threat to the U.S. and to the region. Odierno says a brigade from the 10th Mountain Division will take the new task. So more U.S. troops to Africa. And finally, before we get started today, I want to read this story that's kind of related to our topic. A New York judge has struck down as unconstitutional a portion of a law giving the government wide powers to regulate the detention, interrogation, and prosecution of suspected terrorists. Judge Catherine Forrest said in a written ruling today that a single page of the law has a chilling impact on First Amendment rights for journalists and others. She cited testimony by journalists that they feared their association with certain individuals overseas could result in their arrest. The ruling came in a lawsuit challenging the law on behalf of journalists, scholars, and others. Forrest cited that the vague nature of the law as it pertains to journalists and the government's inability to provide assurances that the specific conduct at issue would not subject plaintiffs to prosecution and detention. Well, the First Amendment, which came up in that lawsuit, is certain to come up in our discussion today. I want to remind you the number to call in is 813-239-9663 or dj at wmnf.org. Tomorrow, the Tampa City Council will hold a public hearing and a final vote on the proposed temporary clean zone ordinance for the Republican National Convention. The ordinance has been altered a little bit and it's now rebranded the event zone. My guest this afternoon is Amos Myers. He's a critic of Tampa's proposed clean zone and he's with Resist RNC. Welcome Amos. Thank you. And I want to ask you why are you opposed to this event zone or clean zone ordinance? Well, it, um, the, the First Amendment of the Constitution states that um, there should be no law prohibiting the freedom of the free exercise, uh, the uh, bridging the freedom of speech or the right uh, to peacefully assemble, and this ordinance violates that. It, I reject the ordinance based on that, that uh, First Amendment alone. Why do you think it abridges people's First Amendment rights? Well, first of all, it creates a permit process. Uh, if you have a right, then uh, it's, it's, it, there's no permission needed for that right. It's something inalienable, it's something I'm born with. By creating a permit process, it's, um, it, it creates me asking somebody for something I already have, and that, ver uh, that alone turns that right into a privilege. And that, so based on that, 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 they're saying that we don't have these rights, they're saying they're privileges, and I, I disagree with that. And let's back up a little bit. This clean zone was proposed a, f a couple of months ago, and it involves a portion of the city. It was originally about six square miles. Now it's about uh, two and a half, I think, square miles near downtown. And it's where certain things will be limited. Certain weapons will be limited, certain masks and so forth will be limited. F and, and there will be also a two to be determined parade route. And there's also going to be a a zone where protesters can assemble without any restriction, well, without um, any time restrictions, and they usually call these things lately, they've been calling them um, First Amendment zones or um, free speech zones, but here it's called a public viewing area. Um, and so you think that being restricted like that is, is something that you don't favor? 
correct. Uh, w the Declaration of Independence, uh, you know, we fought for these rights from the entire boundaries of our country, and uh, what they're trying to limit it to certain areas. Where do we draw the line? Let me read. You wrote a letter to Mayor Buck Buckhorn. I'm going to read a, a small part of this for our audience before we take our first calls. And you write to, to, to Bob Buckhorn, Mr. Buckhorn, you have a dilemma on your hands. The RNC is coming to Tampa in August, and along with it comes a very large following of protesters. They come to speak out against the policies of the federal government, and they do it nonviolently. That is not your dilemma. Your dilemma is in the ordinance you sent to city council. In it, you have a design which not only infringes on civil rights, but also will create a scenario where the protesters will include the city of Tampa in its scope of protesting. And in, in your letter, you go on to suggest an alternative way, way that it could happen. And you told me before the broadcast that you hadn't heard a response from Mayor Buckhorn. You suggested that you remove the event zone in the public viewing area and replace it with a First Amendment platform in the form of a free speech concert. The city of Tampa should host a stage in Curtis Hickson Park where during the days during the day, groups and individuals can speak to the guests of the city, and in the evening, they can host bands. During RNC events, concerts can be playing far away from the forum. What do you think? Why do you think that that isn't going to um, isn't something that the mayor has responded to you about yet? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I was at the State of the City address, and I and I heard his, him quoting Martin Luther King. I heard him uh, challenging us to to be a place to make Tampa better. Um, I heard them, the, the officials of, of Tampa state that they're there to defend our freedom of speech. Um, Chief Assistant um, uh, Police uh, Chief Bennett uh, stated that he is defender of, of our First Amendment. City Council stated such. So uh, why, not, why not celebrate our First Amendment rights instead of infringing upon them? All right, well, we have our first call. If you'd like to join the, t the conversation, you can call 813-238-8001. Let me give you that number again. I'll give you the right one this time. Sorry, Julie. 813-239-9663. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. Let's go now to James in Sarasota. Hi, James. Hey, how you doing? Very good. You? The way we can hear this. Over shout or talk above, and I think you're uh, you're denying somebody else their First Amendment rights. So, how can we come together and let you speak what you want to speak, and let the the RNC speak what they want to speak without becoming a shouting match and trying to talk over each other? I mean, if you want to become, if you want to have your own speaking ability, that's fine. And if they want to have their own speaking ability, that's fine too. But how do you not come together and not shout over each other? All right, thank you for that call, James. Uh, I'm suggesting we are together. Uh, they've rented a forum in which they're going to speak what they want to speak. And, and by having um, all, of our, all of us have a stage, I'm not suggesting it's just for protesters. Anyone can come and use that stage. It's for concerts. It's for the groups protesting. It's for the counter-protesters. It's for the Republicans. It's for everybody. I'm not, I'm not suggesting anyone be limited. All right, if you'd like to call, the number is 813-239-9663. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. My guest this afternoon is Amos Myers. He's a critic of Tampa's proposed clean zone ordinance. It's also called the event zone. That's the new name they're, they're giving it. Tomorrow morning at Tampa City Council, they will have the public hearing and a second and final vote on the ordinance. And it, it passed five to two last time. There were two dissenters. Uh, and it looks like it'll probably pass again. They made minor changes, not very serious changes, not very substantial changes. Um, assuming it will pass, how do you think this will play out? How do you think that, um, do you think that, the, it, that this will create a more orderly protest area where they'll have, um, will, you, can, uh, you can protest on, on sidewalks unlimited, but this is mostly restricting people in, in city parks. How do you think that will play out in August? Uh, well, first of all, if you gather in groups of more than 49, they do want to limit you even on the sidewalk. So there is, they're even putting limits on that. Um, but the, the way that they've designed this ordinance, uh, I, I feel strongly that it's going to follow the trends of all these, um, these natural special security events where they're, they're designing a battlefield. And if you design a battlefield, that's what you're going to have. And I don't think anyone wants that. All right, let's go now to the phones. Tom in St. Pete, you're on the air. What would you like to say? Yeah. 
All right, thanks, Tom. The meeting starts at 9, and uh, I don't know exactly what time. Uh, I didn't look at the agenda to see what time it's time certain for, but I think the public speaking is usually pretty early. Um, uh, does, do you know any different? I'm going to be there at 9. Yeah. I th the meeting starts at 9, and so I think that that's probably the best time. That's when most people will be arriving, I think. Um, I want to, before I go to Amos to, re to respond to what Tom was saying, I want to bring up two points related to what Tom was talking about. One is what he, so this is again, so this idea of having a stage in Curtis Hickson Park. One is the problem of, I think in the contract with the Republicans, the city gives the Republicans first dibs on the parks. And my guess is that Curtis Hickson Park is probably going to be booked by the Republican Party or affiliated groups throughout the convention. That's, that's the first thing that I'd like you to address. The other is the, the argument that could be made against your idea of having a stage in Curtis Hickson Park that I could pr predict that the city might make is that this public viewing area, the fenced in, presumably um, free speech zone that will be near the forum, they're going to allow people to be there the whole time. And I would guess that the city would say, look, if you want to have your your 24 hour um, gathering and you want to have music, why don't you just do it inside this free speech zone? What are your responses to that, Amos? Uh, well, first of all, I didn't. I wasn't aware until just the other day that the um, RNC uh, host committee had for, had dibs in all the parks. Um, I thought they rented just the forum and the convention center. So, uh, and they're they're outlining a permit process for those parks. So, you know, I don't really uh, have an answer for that uh, at the moment. I would hope that they would want to work with the crowd that they bring along with the uh, their guests that they know they bring these protesters, um, but. As far as having a, um, a place that's uh, not near the forum, I'm suggesting that um, that the event zone, the public viewing area be eliminated, the permit process for the parks be eliminated, they violate our constitution. Um, what I'm suggesting is people should be able to be on the sidewalks 24 hours a day regardless. I mean, if I'm a resident of Tampa, I should be able to walk, I do walk through the city at, at all hours of the night and I, no one stops me because no one should be able to stop me. There's been a controversy. The so the uh, the city wants to ban certain weapons inside this clean zone, inside the green the event zone, and they also wanted to ban handguns, but were not allowed to by a Florida law. Um, what do you, what are your feelings about whether the city should be able to ban handguns if they're going to be banning other types of weapons and they're going to try to have a controlled area in in the clean zone? The people that they're concerned about already have had a background check and have a permit to carry a concealed weapon. There's already a process for that. They typically are the more law-abiding citizens to begin with. Um, those aren't the people that they're concerned about, so why would they want to infringe on those rights? All right, thanks. Let's go back to the phones. We have Tim in Tampa. You're on the air. Hi, Tim.
All right, thanks for that call, Tim. Uh, I want to give out the number again so we can get as many people calling as possible. Especially we'd like to hear from women if you're out there and you have an opinion about this topic. 813-239-9663 or WMNF.org, DJ at WMNF.org. Alan in Newport Ritchie, I'm trying to put you on the air. Hey, how are you doing? Very good, you? Thanks, Alan. Thanks for the reminder about the Constitution. You know, that, that reminds me, and I'm going to let um, Amos weigh in on this, but I, it, it reminds me, I, over the weekend was the first anniversary of the 15th of May protests in Spain, and there were thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people in the streets of Madrid and lots of other cities in Spain. And my guess is that I don't think they applied for permits to be there. I think they just went into the streets and they just went into their parks, they went into their public spaces. And there, there wasn't such the uptightness, if I could invent a word, that there is in the United States about always applying for permits and asking for permission and um, uh, that it seems to be happening, especially regarding this clean zone. Um, your opinion, Amos? Alan's exactly right. We, we do have a problem in this country. We need more people like Alan. Uh, you know, what in the um, the reasons that the city council is is saying that uh, they can pass these laws against us is that they say the Supreme Court ruled that our rights are not absolute. And I reject that notion and I follow what Alan's saying and say we need to reinterpret our understanding of the Constitution and what we think it means. And we only have the rights we're willing to fight for and just because they pass this ordinance doesn't mean my rights go away. If I want to walk down the streets with 500 of my friends and, and be it peacefully and nonviolently and, on, and, and follow the law, there's no reason that I should I should stop that just because the ordinance uh, interferes with that. All right, let's take another phone call. The number is 813-239-9663. Sam and Brandon. Very good. How are you? I think we're just totally un-American. 